Hello, excitement today. We have the iFlight Commando 8 radio. This is uh, another radio which has an internal Express ARS module, although this one also has the CC2500 chip in it, this particular version, which means I can do things like uh, FreeSky as well. There's actually various versions of this and there's little things you can tick. So uh, you can just get a straight ELRS one in either 2.4 or the 868 and 915 or you can get what I've got, which is the uh, CC2500 plus the 2.4 ELRS, or as there's, there's just one with just the CC2500 chip or just ELRS. Lots of different versions. It is a nice little form factor radio with a little screen here. Now this can run OpenTX or EdgeTX. It's got an inbuilt antenna. Uh, sticks are just here to go in. We'll, we'll go through this in a bit more detail when we go to close up. But one of the interesting things about this one, aside from having that extra chip, and I know what you're thinking, it's sort of similar to the, the Zorro. One big criticism the Zorro had was the batteries and the battery life. This, I do notice, uses 18650 batteries. Each of those 18650 are 2000 mAh each, so you've got a complete total of 4000 mAh, which should hopefully give a lot more flight time for you guys that were experiencing problems. But um, let's get out of the box, let's go in close up, and let's see what we need to do to set it up. Okay, here's the Commando 8, so let's actually open this up properly and see what we've got inside here. I did have a look before and I thought, oh, this is all sealed. I should get it out and close up just so people can actually see what's, what there is in there. So, we've got a little Allen key and some stickers and something written in Chinese. And then here's the main radio itself, so let's just break the seal. That's the radio. So if you'll notice, the sticks um, are shipped slightly separately, just here, look. So let's take these guys out and screw them in before we do anything. All right, then we've got this. Hall sensor gimbals, feels pretty good. Feels very much, um, feels very much like an Xbox controller. I was just playing last night and I was like, well, this feels familiar, that's why. Got an antenna here that can rotate like so, depending which way your antenna is orientated. And what we've got, we've got a big fan unit on the back. Uh, that probably explains why I've got this other thing. So if you didn't want to run that and you wanted to run another module, I did have this bit and I thought, what's that for? And now it sort of makes sense. Basically in here is obviously, it looks like we take that bit out and we put that bit in if you want to attach an external module. I think the idea here is that you generally wouldn't because you'll have uh, ERS and something else. You've got push in, push out switches, which I quite like actually. And then you've got freeway rockers. I don't like the freeway rockers so much. And that's about it. Not many switches, and you've got these two joysticks. So, oh, we've got SD card here, uh, USB C for charging, and we've got a power button here. Is there any juice in this one? Welcome to HTX. All oh, right, it's running HTX. I guess all the other stuff is very much as before. It's got a small screen in there. Um, it's hard to see in the viewfinder. It's all happy when I look here. So yeah, we've got a joystick this side, the menu button here. Okay, so back is like this. There we go. And our model button over here. We've basically got little bits written on it, which hopefully you can just see. And then we should be able to yeah go into the the mode as per normal. So this is going to feel very familiar to anybody that's used EdgeTX or OpenTX before. What I want to do is find out how I put my own firmware on it, charge it up all the way. It seems to get free lights, but it could do slightly more. And then, um, yeah, mainly I want to know how do we update the firmware, because I want to have it so it uses my own passphrase. And then um, I want to try flying it with some bits and pieces and see how it does. Like it so far, I can I can feel that the the fans come on. I wonder if that means uh, ELRS is running at a, a high rate or something. So running at 10 milliwatts. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I like I like its feel so far. It's um, I don't know why. So that'd be arm and disarm. That might be turtle mode. These would be my flight modes, and that'd be probably going into air mode and beeper, something like that. 
So it's got enough. It hasn't got an awful lot of switches, but it's certainly got enough for quads. And I like the feel of these so far. So yeah, let's uh, let's test it out and do a bit more. So as far as updating goes, I thought the easiest thing to do was to put it into Wi-Fi connectivity and then basically read what it is. And it seems here it says iFlight 2400TX, so that's probably it. But let's go into Wi-Fi update mode and see what appears on the computer. So I've just gone ahead and joined to that network and I find it really useful that um, anything with version 2 onwards basically tells you what's on there already and that says iFlight 2400TX firmware. So we're pretty confident about what to load. So if we come over here, the latest version is two, ooh, two four zeros out now. I did not know that. So we're targeting iFlight 2.4 gigs, 2400TX, basically the TX or the RX. And we're gonna use Wi-Fi. And what I basically want here is my custom binding phrase, of course. And what I'm going to do, I've noticed on my one that it sometimes doesn't work using that default address because it has to do some little things to DNS. But if I change it manually to the same address, it seems to be OK. So let's try building and flashing this. OK, that all looks good so far. So to check that uh, is on the radio, a quick way I thought of doing is to go ahead and enable Wi-Fi again, and then we'll see if it comes up with the right firmware level. Yep, it's now running firmware 240, so that's good. Just before we test this out and fly some stuff, I wanted to go through just a few little bits, because some things are a little bit different than your normal radio. And um, One is how you turn it on. If you just press that button, it basically shows you how charged it is. This is charged all the way up. But to actually turn it on, it's kind of like if you've had a DJI quad. Short press, then a long press, and the sort of lights go up. Welcome to HTX. And it's the same to turn it off. You don't just hold it down. You do short press, long press, and then it shuts back down again. When you plug in power, you'll see the amount of lights that uh, are lit up as it's charging. And obviously when that gets to four, it, it fills, which is quite nice. I like to see how charged it is. Uh, as I go. The other thing to mention is Express LRS is on an external module, it just doesn't look very external because it's kind of fixed in there. So when you're doing your setup, you will notice you would still use the external RF and mode of CRSF, and that would be your um, Express LRS. The internal module is what will then use the CC2500 chip. So basically that would set to multi and then it still comes up with all the protocols and some of which aren't valid like FlySky wouldn't work because we don't have a, the right chip for that one. But the obvious one to use might be FreeSky X which would be the one I'm using. So I'm going to, when we fly this, take out something on Express LRS and take out something on FreeSky just to see what sort of range it can get really because uh, obviously it should do alright, it's got a reasonable uh, antenna that should work fine so it's a case of just binding up and seeing how it goes. Okay, so what happens if you don't like the stick feel here or heavens forbid you're a mode one flyer? Well, at the back here, you've got these two little arrows and I've gone ahead and taken this one off. The idea is you slide them. I have to say, this was a lot of effort. It's more of like getting both thumbnails under and dragging it as much as I can. There are two holes that you use here and here and you've got your, your handy dandy little Allen key that will go in there and uh, interact with the screws. So for each of the sticks, this larger one will change the centering. So if you loosen it off, the sticks will center. If you tighten it, um, it won't center. So that will be for your throttle stick. Um, but if you wanted mode one, obviously that would need to be your throttle stick. So you'd need to loosen that one. This other one here uh, changes the resistance. So basically how easy it is to move. I think that's just an up and down thing rather than a left right thing because they're two completely different things. So if you wanted to go ahead and swap between Express LRS and something else you'd have to take this module out. So let's unwind this and see what's underneath. So once I'm undone this just lifts out and you can unplug this plug here and the antenna and when you unplug that 
you can plug it straight into this and that will go in there. I'm not going to do it because I don't need to and I don't really want to take the glue off those antennas or stuff. But yeah, you can swap the module. I would say it's not really something that's particularly easy uh, because, you know, that's a lot more hassle than just plugging in a module and stuff. Uh, so so beware and get the, the, the model you actually want to use because I wouldn't relish the thought of just having to swap something and then swap back because it's, it's a lot of work to do. Now another part where it acts a little bit differently is plugging into a computer. Normally with uh, OpenTX radios of late, you sort of turn them on and you plug them in and you'd expect to get that prompt about do you want to connect as a joystick or an SD card? You can see it's gone into charge mode. And what you actually do is just you hold down the power button for a couple of seconds and then ask the question, do you want to use a joystick or the SD card. Now I've got it so my sim is on so I'm gonna go ahead and say I want to use the joystick and that gets detected straight away. No particular problem and um, seems to play pretty well. That's this if you can look for a viewfinder at your fingers on a radio and are still able to uh, fly around. The, uh, the sim, of course, is on 0 0.56, available to you from Steam and GitHub and uh, lots of different places like that. But that's enough for my advertising. Back to the radio. Hello, welcome to the field. On another glorious day, I have created my own crop circle in the endless long grass here. And uh, yeah, it's time to test the Commando 8 out and see how it performs with models. So what I've done, I've brought along uh, a few quads. I got my Quilla because I often test um, Express LRS things with the Aquila just to make sure it, you know, it gets a good kilometer and it's got a good signal, uh, mainly for that. I also thought, hey, this has got the CC2500 chip, so I should bring something on FreeSky to make sure this works. So I've got this one and I picked it because I haven't flown it for ages. This is the Hobbymate Comet, I think it was called. Really liked it, but I really haven't flown it much. I think Betaflight is on Free5 or something like that. Uh, you'll notice it's got a run cam thumb on it. That's for an upcoming review, so I'm I'm getting double use out of uh, what I'm doing here, but I'm uh, looking forward to flying that. And I'll even be flying, although that's probably not for this video, this big beastie, which is the Chimera 7, which is another upcoming review. But uh, I'll be flying all these today uh, and seeing how we go. So let's, let's crack on, get the radio going, and see how we get on. Okay, so we're up and running on the little Aquila quad. As I mentioned, the reason I fly this one is because I've flown this one on every other ELRS module or radio I've done. So it's a handy way of being able to do a comparison between them because I will notice if the signal drops off at a particular point or it seems less good than it was previously. That said, I am aware that this is a little bit shaky. I do need to do some work on it and my batteries just aren't lasting as long as they were. I used to be able to get like seven, eight minutes out of these. It's now sort of three or four and it is pretty much done. There wasn't too much of a wind um, going on this time, but it seems to drain the batteries fairly quickly. Um, I should also mention that I put the module into 100 milliwatts, which is what I generally do with all of them. And I do lower the speed, so the, the hertz rate, of the, that LQ at 4 100 means it's doing 150 hertz. Which, and the reason for that is because this is not a, a freestyle quad that I'm really going to throw around. It's just really for cruising out, seeing how it does. And we're getting here on the turn, and we'll probably see, yep, the LQ drops down a bit. The DBM RSSI dropped a bit when we hit the null point but it's looking quite reasonable now. Yeah, I'm fairly happy with that. So let's speed up and see what happens when we fly behind ourselves. That saved a bit of time, didn't it? These, uh, these crops are slightly terrifying in a place to go it down into. I saw uh, a wing go into crops like this before and like 20 people in the field looking for it and we could not find it. It was just so dense. Anyway, I'm way behind myself now and ELRS doesn't do particularly well going behind itself. The uh, antenna is being blocked by myself. It's in the sort of wrong position on the quad. 
and we can see the LQ starts falling off on the turn. Uh, yeah, we go over minus 105 of the DBM value, but that's about 300 meters behind us, so that's not bad. I mean, I don't have to readjust myself. Everything is good. So I'm pretty happy as that as a test. Okay, no problems there. It felt pretty good. Um, good range on the Express LRS. So let's move over to flying on FreeSky. We're using the Comet. Uh, this is an XM Plus receiver, which I always used to use before Express Service came along. And the idea here is not to test how far it can go, because it's it's not something I'd want to push the range with. It's just to fly around and, and have a good time. Um, and just make sure that that signal is solid and the radio feels good. Okay, literally haven't flown this for a couple of years. And uh, as I said, it this is on Betaflight 3 something. And you can kind of tell when I'm doing some of the sort of the, the flips and coming back down, there is a little bit of um, shake when it when it gets into the prop wash. I've noticed that's something that's cleared up a lot on, on Beta Flight version four. For some reason, this flight control has got a barometer in it. So, you know, I've put that on screen for no particular reason other than like, oh, look, I've got a barometer. I might as well put it there. So signal here, I'm pretty happy with. As I said, I'm not trying to do any serious distance on this. Um, and I, I should explain as, as well as as far as Express LRS goes, I'm not trying to go to the edges of the range at all there either. I am sat on the floor, which doesn't, you know, do wonders for the range. I just want to make sure I get a good kilometer with good signal. And that's good. And here on Free Sky, you know, we're just going a couple of hundred meters. But the main thing is, like, how's it feel? Have I got any any dodgy bits? And the answer is to that is absolutely not. I had a, a grand old time flying this around, having a bit of a freestyle, going around the trees, and uh, yeah, great fun. I don't know why I haven't flown this quad for so long, because I had an absolute blast with it, and I'm going to fly this one some more. I keep saying that, but this is one of the quads that has constantly hung up on my wall, because when I tested it, I was like, this is a good quad. Keep that there for uh, when we need it next time. It was super fun to fly. I've got to fly this thing more often. So efficient as well. The battery, I, 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 after five minutes of tooting around quite fast, still was 15 volts, which is crazy. Huh. Fly it some more. And as I mentioned, aside from flying that other quad more, I did take the Chimera 7 out and I had a good few flights in that one. Range on that one, once again, absolutely fine. No problems. Very similar to the Aquila. Uh, but I'll have a full review of this one coming up later, so I won't go into it in great detail now. Now, just before we get to the final conclusions, I want to talk about the hardware, because you probably notice in a couple of the clips I've shown me turning this on. Welcome to HTX. And it, it would whinge about the throttle not being in minimum position. And there's actually a slight problem I found I've got here, where if you look at that stick, I have to push it all the way down, and if I let go, it pops back upwards and it was calibrated before that that was zero but then when I let go it was in USEC terms that was about like that's 1000 that's about 1026 so depending how my quad was set up that would say oh you you can't arm because your throttle's not idle so I'd have to hold it down to arm it so that is a little bit of a problem I don't know if it's just my one the old reviewers curse but it's just having that so it won't stay there is a bit of a pain. And I tried doing all the modifications to the tensioning, tensioning and it's it's not, the rest of this can go absolutely super floppy, but it will still have that little bit where it just won't hold there. So what I've done, I've basically calibrated this very carefully. So in my movement, I push it down to there instead of there. And now that is zero. And obviously I lose just a, a touch of the stick there, but, that's not too bad a workaround. The other question I thought you guys might have is what if I'm a, a, a crab, a uh, one of these guys? And the answer is, yeah, I think it feels okay. I think your fingers tend to sit in switches a little easier, but I can, I can go to those ones okay with those fingers and I can move these around. And of course you've got somewhere to put your strap because you're, you know, you might be holding it a little bit weird, but I think that's certainly feasible. But me being like a gamer and being used to gamepads, um, I'm quite happy with my thumbs. The the other thing to mention 
These actually feel pretty good, but they do do three different lengths of sticks on these ones. So for some people, if it feels like, oh, this is too sensitive, you can just get a bit of a taller stick and that will make things less sensitive. Anyway, conclusions. Okay, so let's talk about the Commando 8 and what we like and don't like about it, or specifically what I like and don't like about it. You'll have your own opinion. And that's very much where it starts because one of the things I do like about this is the form factor. To explain, every evening for me is spent pretty much playing on video games because it's, it's one of my big passions. And the difference between something like this is a, an Xbox Series X controller and this is closer and closer together. This is slightly bigger, um, obviously it's got different sticks, but it's really very, very close. Now, some people don't like that. They like the larger traditional sort of Tyrannus uh, X90 type size and shape, and that's perfectly fine as well. But I find for, you know, just chucking in a backpack, taking out, flying a whole bunch of quads, this, uh, this sort of form factor really does suit it. The sticks feel very nice to fly, um, and there's no jitter when you set these up on bead flight. They said it's got digital hall gim gimbals, and I guess that's why. Obviously, I've got that issue I've told you about there. I've worked around it, um, so everything's working nicely there. Obviously, it runs OpenTX or EdgeTX. This came with EdgeTX already and set up, which makes uh, things a doddle. It had all the right Lua scripts on there, like Express LRS, so very easy to get going with as long as you're familiar with OpenTX. If you're not, I've got a bunch of videos about it and you should watch them. I also found the antenna is uh, actually pretty good. I like the fact that you can fold it away because if it's sticking out like that and you put it in a backpack, it's not so good. Fold it away, it's good. Um, and then you've got your two different ways of doing it. This is how I, I flew it with the Free Sky Quad and my Express LRS was set up that way, so I flew it like that. Uh, and I found the signal to be good. Um, better than some radios, not as good as the sort of the mini Moxon type antenna, but again, very, very usable uh, just from the get-go. Also like the fact it's got a very large capacity battery. That day when I flew at the field, um, I had my PowerPlay DVR and that ran out of batteries. Then my backup batteries for my goggles also ran out of batteries. And this still had free lights available. I, I just expected to switch it on and see free lights, but I think I was playing on the sim, so it's gone <laughs> up to four now. I think this would have been powered on for around an hour and a half, two hours but in all that time it only went down like one little dot, so I think that's very good. Uh, large batteries equals you can do a lot of flying. And of course the CC2500 chips plus ELRS does a lot, uh, but you can get them in different flavours. But this one covers about 90% of all the things I fly. Now on the flip side, what's bad about it? Well, as mentioned, that little stick problem that I have is a bit of a pain. As I said, I've worked around it. I, I think the sticks feel great, but just not being perfect is less than perfect. Hopefully, as I said, this is just a, you know, I get the crappy review on and this won't happen to anybody else, but there it is, it's there. I also think that if you want to use an external module with this, it's, it's a bit of a faff. Having to unscrew this, uh, take it out, uh, unplug some wires, plug stuff back in and screw another module in, is too much of a faff to be very usable. It's like, yeah, it's integrated Express LRS, but it's not like an internal module, because if you had that, you can just add extra modules to it very easily. That said, as I mentioned before, this has the CC2500 plus Express LRS, and that covers me for 90% of all the things I fly, so I don't really have to think about it. But if I was taking out, for example, something on Crossfire or Tracer or something like that, then, you know, I, I, I wouldn't take this radio because it would just be too much of a hassle to change it around. The final bad point, it, it's also a good point, it's the, the fact this has got larger 18650 batteries. Brilliant, that's great. If they go, how how do we change them? I don't know, because when I opened up the back, I kind of expected to be able to see the batteries. There's nothing to take off here and, and take them out. Um, I don't think you'll have to charge up on the field, but if the batteries degrade and have to be changed, I'm not sure how to change them. So I hope that is easy in, in some way, because that might come up in the future. But overall, I do really like it. I think it's not perfect, it has some flaws, but it's it's a great radio um, and an ideal one, as I said, for chucking in the backpack, flying a whole bunch of quads. Uh, it's only got two free position switches and two two position switches. Um, and it's kind of subjective about how much you like these rocker switches. I prefer like a, a physical actual switch on a on a pole personally, but I do like these 
switch switch on switch off type thing so that's that's nice and I really like the the look and feel overall the way it sits in the hand the way it feels to fly I, I like that so I'll be flying with this uh, a lot more so you should see it in a, a bunch of upcoming videos iFlight as well uh, are going to be bundling this in their their RTF series so um, if you look at their website there are a whole bunch of sort of ready to fly quads with uh, DJI Digital uh, this radio on Express LRS and whatever their quad is uh, including things like the Chimera 7 which I've got the analog version of and some of their Cine Whoops and all sorts of things like that. So if you're starting from zero that is a possible way to go because the iFlight stuff is pretty high quality and I've pretty much liked all the quads they've had and I'm tending to like this radio. Anyway this has been the review of the iFlight Commander 8 radio uh, available in various flavours. I hope that review has been helpful. You will find of course links down below to where you can check it out in more detail and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well you've made it to the end of the video so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw then please consider subscribing and if you really like what you saw then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.